Hey everybody, Nate here from WASD20. Today I'm going to show you how to very simply shade a mountain in GIMP or Photoshop or uh, any similar digital program. So first thing I'm starting with here is a parchment background. The second thing is I am using a digital drawing tablet. I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro. Uh, you can see the link to these in the description below. I highly recommend one of these if you're going to start mapping digitally. Uh, even if you get a very simple one like the, uh, the basic Wacom Intuos or a uh, bamboo, uh, it saves you a lot of time and trouble and is a really powerful tool. Anyway, let's start. So I am using a black brush here in GIMP. This is GIMP 2.8. If you're wondering why it looks all funny, it's because I got a, uh, a skin. The other thing I always do with GIMP is I have windows and I go to single window mode just to keep it all together here. But uh, I am using a black brush. Uh, I have it set to my mapping standard brush, which has um, a little bit of uh, sensitivity tied to pressure so that when I press down it's a little thicker and when I let up it gets a little thinner. So you can see a slight difference there uh, in the thickness of the line. But anyway, other than that I'm just using a straight black brush and we're going to draw a simple mountain. Kind of make it a little rocky, do a little ridge there and then we go up something like that. Okay, so very simple, not spending a whole lot of time. The main thing I want to focus on is the shading. Uh, I should also note that I'm getting a lot of what I do from Fantastic Maps, and he has a more detail, detailed tutorial on the matter, uh, and I'll put the link to that in the description below. He does it with the, the full ridgeline technique, uh, which I also really like, but I thought I'd keep it very simple for this one, just do a single mountain, really. So if you want to, uh, you could draw in a black line like this. Uh, and maybe coming down here as well uh, to kind of tracing some sort of ridge down the mountain uh, and then perhaps that could lead into you know a, a longer ridge line more mountains below it uh, but I'll be keeping it fairly simple with that you don't even need to do that you could simply move on to the shading part after that uh, initial outline of the mountain but uh, I'll go a little more detailed here, and we, we will do some lines coming out like this. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing these a little bit thinner than my uh, other one. And like that. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out, so we'll just keep it simple with that, and now I'm going to move on to the actual shading. So the way that you want to do shading is you'll want to make a new layer, and the layer we will call Mountain Shading. And the thing that you want to remember here is because to really leverage the power of the parchment background, we make this an overlay layer. Now you can do this on a plain white map too, but you won't use an overlay layer. You'll have to find a good color, uh, probably sort of an opaque black or gray or something. Anyway, that's not what I'm showing. I'm showing you with a parchment background how you can make it an overlay layer. And then we can go in and we can really uh, change this up. So I'm gonna be using my shade brush, which um, the main thing is you want one that's set to pressure opacity and I'm actually gonna get rid of the other settings here I just want pressure opacity I'm gonna increase the size of the brush because I'm just gonna be blocking in the shading here and I'm gonna make this pretty opaque we'll go down a little bit in the opacity and now we'll go up a little higher okay there we go we'll try that out I'm just using a flat round brush and we're gonna block in some shading make sure I'm on my Yep, I'm on my mountain shading. Good. And we'll go in here and we'll just kind of block it in. Now notice what this does. I have black selected, but it's not making it black. Because it's an overlay layer, it's actually just darkening the parchment that I already have there. So I can go in here and I can just kind of block in a darker side of this mountain. Messed up a little bit there. I want to decrease the size of my brush here so I can get the tip. There we go. And I like to make the, the ridge line a little bit darker. 
and maybe along these lines a little darker as well. And you kind of make it fade out as it gets a little bit lower. You can make some, some lines kind of going out like that if you want to. But make it fade out. And then we'll have to do a little more right here. Because this part would also be in the shadows, kind of like a little mini mountain on this mountain. And we'll do a little bit on this side. But my light is coming from uh, this direction here. So, a little, a little bit on that side, but not too much. And darken the ridge line a bit. Just a light amount there. All right. And I think that will about do it here for the initial shading. Now, I like to get a little more dynamic by doing another, so we'll call this Mountain Shading 2. Make another overlay layer. And darken it further. So, here we go. And I'm actually going to use a bit of a softer brush here. And get in here and do a little more detail. So I'll go along the ridge line a little harder. And along these black lines that I've already done, get those a little harder as well. And you can just kind of scribble. It doesn't have to be too precise. There's going to be natural shadows all over the place kind of block them in where you feel. Now it might look a little messy when I'm this zoomed in, but once you zoom out you won't be able to tell that at all. So I'll continue shading here, here, maybe a little there, a little there. Oops, I clicked a button. Alright, get a little over in here. Okay, and there we have it. Now, the last step, and you can make a separate layer for this, I'm just gonna put it on Mountain Shading 2, is that I'm going to switch to white, and if you're on overlay, white, again, will not actually draw white, but it will lighten the background. Uh, so, the background is a parchment, of course, so now I'm going to do my highlights. And so, here we go, I'm gonna lay in some highlights. You wanna focus on especially the high ridges, and the parts that would be catching the most light. So, right there. All of this would probably be getting quite a bit of light. I've still got my opacity set to 66, and I've got pressure opacity too, so that if I do a, a harder line, really press hard, it's gonna do that. If I really don't push very hard, it's just gonna kinda do it lighter. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna land some highlights here and brighten really try to brighten up this right side to make it more dynamic, to make it stand out a little more. We want to keep some of those shadows there, don't want to cover them all up. And then we can even do some light highlights on the other side, uh, in places that might we might think would catch a little more light. And you can kind of choose those, it doesn't matter too much, but uh, I can look it can look nice if you have a little variation on that side as well. We'll just pretend there's a little hill right there maybe that's catching some light in our little world. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, I've got a lot to learn on this technique. Uh, I think I'll, I'll look back on this later and say I can, I can do a lot better, hopefully. Uh, keep on improving. But I've been using this technique and I really enjoy it. It's one of the many benefits of mapping digitally is that you can get a really cool looking shading effect going. So if we zoom out a little bit, you can see even better that, um, yeah, it, it leaves you kind of a cool effect. So you'd obviously be looking at this from a lot further away, kind of like on this map right here. 
where I've got uh, several of these layered together. You can get a little bit. This is a work in progress map I've got going on. Uh, or on the finished Aronoth map, you can see here, I did a pretty simple style mountain, but um, that shading really kind of helps lift it out of the parchment a little bit and give it some dimension. As usual, if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments down below. I love getting feedback from you. If you're looking for ways to uh, share your maps with me, uh, Facebook and Twitter are great ways. Links down below. Um, I love to see your work as well. I find it very inspirational. Uh, and also make sure you check out Fantastic Maps Tutorials. He's got some great videos and great articles. All right, that's all for this one, everybody. Take care. You'll see me again very soon with more great mapping videos and all kinds of other RPG goodness. Later.